So let's compare Gemini Advanced with ChatGPT+. The first category is going to be facts. Let me ask for the population of the five most populous countries and show it in a bar chart. Gemini generated a response in nine seconds. ChatGPT is still working on it and it took 23 seconds to generate the same bar chart, except it's a different orientation. Show me the nutrition facts for one egg in a table. So here we got a table with the different nutrients and that all looks correct, I think. And ChatGPT generated a similar table. Let's now ask for something different. Who's the current president of France? Provide a source where I can verify your answer. ChatGPT gave me the homepage for the Elysee Palace. Gemini gave me a direct link where I can go and verify who that is and some other links as well. Now summarize this Wikipedia entry. It's a page about YouTube and they both gave me a decent summary of the contents of that Wikipedia page. Now let's ask how has Bitcoin price evolved year to date? Show me a chart. So there was some error here with ChatGPT. Jim and I generated some data, which I don't know if it's correct, but looking at the current Bitcoin price, it does look like this could be correct or close enough anyway. Let's try this again on ChatGPT. Now we failed one more time and it's trying again. And now it worked, but uh, the data here looks quite different. It does says that this is for demonstration purposes. If we inspect how it was generated, it was actually using a random number generator. Gemini included some actual data here, which again, I'm not sure it's correct, but it looks like it might be. Now let's try something new. So let's ask which websites are selling a PS5 with delivery in the EU. Gemini is giving me some options with images of retailers in the EU. ChatGPT is telling me to use Amazon's website in the different EU countries. Let's see how good the models are following instructions. Explain the concept of a neural network in one concise paragraph. These both look good. Gemini is a little bit shorter, but I think these are pretty much equivalent. Give me a five bullet list of things to see and do in New York. Do not include any museums. So Gemini gave me a list with images of things to see and do and no museums included. ChatGPT also gave me a similar list, but in text. Now let's test the coding capabilities. I have a problem here from lead code. This is a hard programming problem. I'm going to just paste in the instructions in Gemini and also ChatGPT. So Gemini is already explaining here how to go about solving this problem and it's giving me the code that should solve this problem with this approach. ChatGPT didn't quite understand that I wanted to code here, so let's ask again. And now I generated the code. Let's now validate if they're correct. I'll copy Gemini code and paste it in lead code, and I'll try to execute this to see if it passes the test cases. So I'll click on run, and it was accepted with a runtime of 61 milliseconds. Now I'm going to try ChatGPT's code here. I'll also paste that in. And I'll run it. It was also accepted with a runtime of 72 milliseconds, which is very similar. Generate a Python Flask web app where users vote on whether they prefer cats or dogs. So I'm trying to create a web page here, and Gemini is giving me a code using the Flask framework and instructions on how to set it up. And ChatGPT also is giving me code plus some instructions. Let's copy this and see how they actually look. So here we have the Python code and the HTML file from Gemini. And we have a simple web page and it looks like the voting button here works. Now let's see ChatGPT's code. And there's no HTML file because it's rendering the page as strings, but it works as well. Now they both look kind of old, so let's try to make it look more modern. And I'll ask the same thing here. So Gemini is telling me to use Bootstrap and include some CSS code here in my HTML file. So I'll try that to see how it has improved. And that looks a lot better and it's still working. Let's see ChatGPT solution. 
here seems to also be using Bootstrap. And that also looks better. Now they both allow me to vote more than once. So let's see if we can modify the code so that users can only vote once. Now I want to make sure users don't need to be authenticated. So Gemini is giving me different options to go about doing this. The first one here is using cookies. I'll just work with that. It's not giving me the full code, now it's giving me what changes I need to make. So I'll just copy that here and paste. It looks like I might need to import a, a new method that is being used here. Now let's see if it works. So now indeed I can only vote once. Let's see ChatGPT solution, which seems to also be based on cookies. So I'm going to paste that in and we run this. And I cannot seem to be able to vote again, which means it's also working. Let's try images in PDFs. So first I'm uploading an image of an IKEA table and asking the dimensions. So Jim and I already figured out that this is an IKEA table and it's giving me the dimensions right away here. And we can verify that in the website. Now ChatGPT doesn't know about this table, but it's giving me some ranges and reference values and they all look reasonable. So I'm uploading another image now of a random product from the internet and I'm asking where do I buy this. Now Gemini found the actual website where I can go and buy this and I can try and click on it. And it takes me to the correct page indeed. ChatGPT is just telling me about where I can find these kind of tables. Now let's try to work with a PDF and ask questions about it. In ChatGPT, you can just upload it right here. This is Google's quarterly report. I want to ask how does Google make money? And it's giving me a correct answer based on the contents of the PDF. To work with PDFs in Gemini, I uploaded the same PDF to my Google Drive, and then I'm going to ask about it. Now it's using the Google Workspace extension and grabbing the contents of the file, which is found here in my Google Drive. Now speaking of extensions, let's talk about integrations and other stuff. So first of all, in Gemini, I can, for example, ask about emails in my Gmail. So I received an email recently talking about OpenGPT. Can you find it and summarize it for me? The Google Workspace extension found the email, which was an email from LangChain with LangChain release notes. And indeed, in that email's body, there is a mention of OpenGPTs. We can also try Google Flights and Hotels extensions. I'm going to ask to estimate a trip from Stockholm to Tokyo with the specified dates here, staying at a three-star hotel and eating out every day. So now it's looking for information and it's telling me right away that it doesn't always get right, so I should verify it. But then it's giving me a price for the cheapest flight I found, some alternatives, hotel options with links where I can go and click and verify that it's free star and with the price that was listed. So this looks good. Now the meals here were estimated in US dollars and when estimating the total for the trip, it forgot to convert USD to Swedish crowns, which is my currency. So let me try to ask it to recalculate after converting it from US dollars to my local currency. And I correctly converted and gave me the correct total. And by the way, you can browse the search results directly here as well. Now I'm going to ask for the main takeaways from this YouTube video, which is from a creator talking about Apple Vision Pro. It hallucinated the price here, but the other information is actually correct. And it was a pretty long video, so it's nice to be able to get these kind of summaries. Now that, that's it for Google's extensions. OpenAI has its own stuff going on here. So for example, in the ChatGPT world, we can work with custom GPTs. These are a bunch of GPTs that are created by the community or OpenAI themselves. We have, for example, Dolly here, things around writing, productivity, research and analysis, and so on. So for example, we can grab this one here, video GPT, and he will walk, walk us through creating a video here using this tool. So definitely a strong developer community here in OpenAI. But there are more things you can do with Gemini as well. For example, if I ask it to write a thank you note for a colleague who helped me with a project, then it's giving me a couple of options here. 
And what we can do is that we can click down here in share and draft in Gmail, and that will take us to Gmail where we'll have the content pre-populated here. And we can use this to send a short and sweet thank you email to a colleague. Or for example, we can ask for a Nisei on say the French Revolution, and it's generating us some text here. And we are able to customize the responses by clicking here and choosing to be shorter, longer, simpler, more casual, or more professional. So for example, if we go with the simpler option, we get a shorter essay with more simple language as well. And then we can also click on share and export it to docs. And that will take us to Google Docs with the content in here as well. So we can then use this as something to work on. In terms of pricing, both products cost about 20 bucks, but Google gives also two terabytes of storage and some other premium benefits like enhanced editing features in Google Photos, monitoring the dark web for your name, using a VPN from Google One, and workspace premium features primarily for Google Meet and Calendar with appointment calendars, professional booking page, background noise cancellation and meet, etc. And then both products have things we can look forward to, for example, Gemini's 1.5 Pro, which has a 1 million context window, and OpenAI also recently announced a text-to-video model, which is very impressive and may or may not be coming to ChatGPT. So which one is better? It's really hard to say, and it really comes down to your preferences and also which ecosystem you're invested in. I think Gemini gave a pretty satisfactory response here by telling us that it's not about who's better, but there are strengths and weaknesses and both products continue to improve on an ongoing basis. I hope this video helped in some way and thank you for watching.